So what we've looked at so far is everything up to this point that we've got here, right? We know the sums of ones, the sums of constants, and the sums of the natural numbers. And you should know these two things, actually these three things, you need to know them all off by heart. But I'm also going to tell you a couple other formulas that you're going to need to be able to use to be able to do summations of more interesting things. Because so far, we only really know how to sum up. How do we describe these kinds of things? What kind of sequences or series might these produce, these kinds of linear. things? Linear, good. We only really know how to describe linear series. There's another word, though, that begins with A that's specific for series and sequences. Good. So we only know how to do arithmetic ones at the moment. So this is for arithmetic series that we have. But we're going to be able to also want to do some quadratic series and some cubic series. And the, there are, in theory, formulae that would do it for the power of 4, power of 5, but they just get more complicated. Um, the reasons you might want to do this is because lots of uh, things in real life will often follow quadratic kind of sequences. And if you're wanting to analyze those things, you might often need to add up lots of those numbers. And so this is how, this is the kind of how these things might behave. So I'm not going to do a proof of the squares or the cubes, but when you get to a different chapter, proof by induction, which I think is chapter seven or eight or nine, one of the later chapters, um, you will actually be able to prove that these are true using a new proof technique that I, I can't show you just yet, but you will be able to prove them to see that they are, they are completely true. So the sum of the squares is a sixth n, n plus one, 2n plus one. And the sums of the cubes is a quarter n squared, n plus one squared. And what I've written over here is do you spot any relationship between r squared, not between r squared and r cubed. This should actually say, do you spot any relationship, if you can cross this out on your notes, between the sum of r and the sum of the r cubed? Do you spot their relationship between them? It's all squared. It's kind of weird, isn't it? The sum of the natural num the sum of the natural numbers, one plus two plus three, is the square root of the sum of the cubes, which is a kind of a weird sort of thing to 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 see. So you need to memorize this, but by memorizing this, you know what the cubes are. This one is just a bit trickier to remember. I suppose what you can notice is. This one has, it's basically a quadratic kind of result because you've got two n's. This one is a cubic result because you've got an n, n, n. And this one is a quartic because you've got an n squared and you've got an n squared. So you've got n to the power of four in there somewhere if you were to expand it. Um, so now we have these. We really are doing exactly the same things that we've done before, but just for using these slightly bigger, more complex formulae that might come with them. So make sure you've kind of squatted, uh, crossed this out. Um, um, yes, I think you do need to know them um, off by heart. However, if you have a panic during a formal assessment, this one and this one appear in the formula book. But why do you think I'm suggesting I just want you to know them in your head? It saves time and it does something else as well. You know, it shows you know how to use it. And for me, the reason I like to know them in my head is it makes me feel confident. And confidence is a huge thing in maths. If you go into the exam and you're flicking through pages of a formula book, because I, I haven't shown you them yet, but there's like 20 pages in the formula book, it can be quite a stressful experience flicking through the formula book trying to find the thing that you need. Whereas if it's in your head, it's not even trying to find it. It's just like instantly coming out your pen and it just makes you feel makes you feel really good and makes you feel like, a, like, you're, like you're a pro with what you're trying to do here. So just going to now um, apply some of these. Um, so this first one that we've got here, the sum from r equals 13 to 24 of r squared, and never, never forgetting what this really means. What this actually is asking for us to do is 13 squared plus 14 squared plus all the way up to 24 squared. That's actually what it's asking for us to do. So never forget what these formulae are actually representing but we can split this into these. So it'll be r equals one on the bottom. What should be my top number here? And here, 12. So we're just gonna go straight in with the formula for this one. So the formula is a sixth n, n plus one, and then two n plus one. 
Is that right? Did I say the formula right? Sixth n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1. Minus a sixth n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1. So we've got 24 times 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 24 times
that it's r squared, so we're going to be using the new kind of formula. So we're going to say it's r squared. And something else that you've probably already noticed, but I just want you to kind of say, and that it's going to 2n rather than n at the top. OK, just a few things that you would notice. Obviously, if you had like a 3 in front of it, you could pull the 3 out to the front as well. So we're going to try and do this by splitting it into the two parts. So the sum, I actually kind of like to write it like this straight away and then fill in the bits. So they're both going to start with r equals 1. What is this one going to go up to? And what is this one going to go up to? n. OK, because it's got to be one less than this part that we've got here. So we're going to do the formulae for both of them. So can you remember the formula? A sixth. It goes a sixth n, n, in this case is 2n, then n plus 1, and then 2n plus 1, which is going to be 4n plus 1. So that's using the formula just straight away in our head. And then the next one is going to be just the standard formula, which is a sixth n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1. Now, if you didn't do the factorising skills that we did on our first lesson, you would expand all of this and then hope to be able to factorise it into this. It would just be a nightmare. So what do, what do they all have in common? And? And? Yes, look, they have a sixth, an n, and a 2n plus 1 in the, the question. And they've both got a sixth, an n, and a 2n plus 1. So it's often useful, like, either underlining something or highlighting what's there to see what's left over, because it's going to make that factorising that bit easier when you come to the next stage. So I'm going to pull out the sixth, the n, and the 2n plus 1. And I'll do some big brackets to remind me I'm now doing this overall factorising. So what should be left for this first section that I've got here? Yep. And 2 and 4n plus 1. Obviously bracketed because they're being multiplied. And then for the next bit. And again, that's going to be bracketed because we're wanting to subtract both of those bits that we've got there. So that is a sixth n, 2n plus 1. Then we have 8n plus 2 minus n minus 1, which is a 6n, 2n plus 1, 7n plus 1, as required. And then I like part B here because it's got some interesting language that I want to talk about. So it says verify that the result is true for n equals 1 and n equals 2. What does verify mean in maths? It's kind of hard to describe, but see if you can have... It's kind of, it's not really like... Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's a bit like prove it, but not prove it in the way that we would say prove in maths. It's like, go on, prove it. Show me that it's true. Verify means... Yeah, it means like use it, check it. Verify means check to see that this works for n equals 1 and n equals 2. So first of all, I am going to check or verify for n equals 1. Now, what that really means is you need to, if I call this the LHS, do you know what LHS and RHS stand for? This is the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side. So I'm going to check n equals 1. I'm going to check the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And if they're equal to each other, then it's true. So the left-hand side is the sum from r equals, uh, well, n is 1, so it'd be r equals 2 to 2 of r squared. What is the sum of r equals, for, uh, the sum of r squared from r equals 2 to 2? Uh, you only have to do it once. So it's just going to be starting with 2 and it finishes with 2. So it's just, no, just 4. Because it starts, it starts and finishes at 2. It doesn't start at 2 and then do 2 again. And then the right-hand side is going to be a sixth multiplied by 1. I'm using this as the right-hand side here. Multiplied by 3, multiplied by 8. So that's 24 divided by 6, which is 4. 
So we can say left hand side equals right hand side. So it is true for n equals 1. Whoa, and now I'm going to do the same for n equals 2. So for n equals 2, it will be the sum of r squared from r equals what? Three. From r equals 3 to what? From r equals 3 to, oh, don't need to write r equals on the top, silly me. From 3 to 4, which is going to be what? Um, Good, it's just going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 9 plus 16, 25. which is 25. So now we're going to do the right-hand side and show that it's also going to be true. So we're going to do a 6 n. 2n plus 1 is going to be 5, and 7n plus 1 is going to be 15. So I'm going to just type that in my calculator, and I know it's going to be 25, because I know it's the formula. So we've got 2 times 5 times 15 divided by 6, and it's 25. The left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, so it is true for n equals 2. Therefore, we have verified it for both of those ones that we've got there. OK. So we're going to have a go just doing questions 1 to 5 in exercise 3B, and then we're going to do some trickier questions in the next lesson. So we're just going to finish up uh, at that point.